The NFL is a business and a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately league, and before you know it, the league's hottest player can quickly become a thing of the past. And every NFL team has expectations of their own heading into each and every year, set by both themselves and the media. Of course, teams, when they show up in June for off-season trading activities, they think they're going to win the Super Bowl. But we don't expect teams like the Detroit Lions or the New York Jets to win a said Super Bowl next year, and do in large part to that, they don't necessarily have a lot to prove. Of course, they have some expectations, but more than likely, unless they are truly, truly awful, you won't see firings after the end of next year if they show some future promise. For some other teams, though, that's not the case, and that's what we are going to discuss in today's video, is three NFL teams that have the most to prove in 2022. So without further ado, let's begin. And we are going to start today's video with the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers are on here for a variety of reasons, but the last time everyone saw this team play, it was week 18 Sunday night of the 2021 NFL season, we saw head coach Brandon Staley do some truly wild shit, and an example of this was going for it on a fourth down inside his own team's 20 yard line. During the course of a game, whether it's from the broadcast, from Twitter, or from Reddit, or wherever you will hear people use the term analytics, and how they play into each and every decision, such as going for it on 4th down on the opposing 43 yard line, or even now going for it on your own 48 yard line, or going for the touchdown versus the field goal when in the red zone. The NFL has truly evolved in a lot of its prehistoric decision making that we saw really hell even as short as 5 years ago. And the Chargers are a team that we expect to be one of the best over the course of the next decade, and that of course is due in large part to the man they have under center in Justin Herbert. And if this isn't clear by the way, Justin himself has nothing to prove in 2022, as in his first two years he's been absolutely spectacular and has been everything the Chargers could have possibly asked for and then some. But the Chargers defense and coaching staff have a lot to prove, and whether or not Brandon Staley is the long-term head coach will be found out this upcoming season. But the Chargers defense in 2021 finished 30th in points scored and gave up less points than only the Detroit Lions who are picking 2nd in the NFL Draft and the New York Jets who are picking 4th in this year's NFL Draft. They tied exactly with 459 gave up with the Atlanta Falcons who are picking 8th and immediately ahead of them, meaning these teams gave up less points than the Chargers, were Jacksonville and Houston who are picking 1st and 3rd respectively. Now, I made a video a couple of days ago on the biggest red flags in the NFL, and I was seriously contemplating on whether or not to put the Chargers in that video due to the possibility of not ruining Herbert because they certainly have not done that through two years, but not maximizing the talent around him from the defensive side of the ball and essentially having him be a modern day Dan Marino. The Chargers are in a good situation for the moment, but this can turn sour for them pretty fast in that sense. Herbert will, rightfully so of course, command a lot of money, and very quickly you go from a wide open Super Bowl window for 4 years while he's on this rookie deal, and for what it's worth, out of any of the past quarterbacks we've seen over the past half decade, Mahomes, Allen, Lamar, Burrow, any of them. Herbert has outproduced all of them through two years, and his team is lagging behind. There's no throw Herbert can't make, and even if you have a defense be average based on the points given up metric in 2021, that would have saved the Chargers 86 total points given up this past year alone. And for a team that had five of their eight losses be by one score, and hell, this is a team that gave up 41 points to the Houston Texans of all teams, those 86 points would go a long way. And the Chargers defense and coaching staff have a lot to prove in 2022. Next up is the Minnesota Vikings, who are in a bit of a tough situation in their own rights, and a lot of that is due to the $45 million cap hit that Kirk Cousins has this coming year. There have been reports recently that Cousins sided with new head coach Kevin O'Connell and even vouched for him to be the next coach for the franchise. It's kind of one thing to think that and have your personal thoughts on the situation in private, but to go out and have that be public knowledge is something else, and now Kirk and the team for that matter will have to back it up and have a lot to prove next year. What will greatly benefit them, and this would be under the assumption Green Bay moves on from Aaron Rodgers, is the division is theirs to lose at this moment in time. Detroit can do all the right things, and they have done a lot of good since hiring Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes, but, and they know this, they will be limited with Jared Goff under center. 
Jared will not take them to the promised land, period. And the Bears roster are in just an overall not good situation because you have Darnell Mooney as your wide receiver one, who isn't a bad player by any means, but him being a wide receiver one does not scare defenses like a Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup, or Devontae Adams do. And speaking of Devontae Adams, he has been pretty vocal that he once paid, and who can blame him? He is truly at the top of his game now, as within the past couple of years, he's cumulatively led the league in touchdowns, been called the best player Aaron Rodgers has ever played with and repeatedly torched defenses time and time again. The last dance was posted by both himself and Aaron Rodgers, so I do think they are gone, which makes this division Minnesota's to lose. Kirk Cousins isn't exactly helping the team out by refusing to take a pay cut, and we've acknowledged that, and there's certainly been times where Kirk has been worth the contract, and there's been times where he's made big throw after big throw, but kind of like usual with Kirk, there's been times where he's been a punching bag of jokes and has looked absolutely atrocious. And with the NFC North and the current state that it's in, there won't be more than likely a time within the next decade where you have a division that's as clear-cut Minnesota's to win as there ever has been. They have to capitalize on this chance with the Lions having either a veteran quarterback who's not good in Jared Goff, or even if they draft a rookie quarterback, the Bears rebuilding, and by the way, I didn't disrespect Darnell Mooney earlier, and I also wanted to include that their defense is kind of in a state of disarray, whether it's trade or extend Khalil Mack, and then of course the Akeem Hicks situation, and then having the Packers in a transition period. And for that matter, the Vikings went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of big teams this year. You can argue they should have beat the Bengals back in week one, and they kept pace with the Rams in December, which as we know, were the Super Bowl representatives for each conference. Minnesota has the talent to beat anyone in the NFC, and by the way, they beat Green Bay when they played in week 11, and that was with Aaron Rodgers throwing for 385 yards and four touchdowns. This was not some fluke win. But for every positive like that game against Green Bay within the Mike Zimmer era, they would counter with a stupid loss to the then winless Lions by letting them march the whole way up the field with a prevent defense and subsequently lose any progress they made. Those excuses are out the window now with Kevin O'Connell as head coach. The bullshit stops in Minnesota, and without a doubt, they are one of a handful of NFL teams with the most to prove in 2022. Next up is the Baltimore Ravens, who will, whether they like it or not, enter next year as underdogs in a lot of ways. They lost their final six games of the season and went 3-8 and eight after a dominant 5-1 and one start, which included wins over the Kansas City Chiefs and a 34-6 thumping over the Chargers before the wheels fell off the wagon. They were one of the most injured teams across the entire NFL, and before the season even started, were down to their third running back and a corner they depended on Marcus Peters also tore his ACL. It was in a lot of ways a nightmarish year for the Ravens, with the expectations they had and with the fact they were still winning games at the beginning of the year, even without these guys. Oh, and by the way, they also lost franchise left tackle Ronnie Stanley as well. The injury list kept piling up and so did the wins, initially at least. And after a while, when you're playing corners against receivers in that division like Jamar Chase that simply aren't NFL caliber, it will take its toll and not surprisingly, it did. Joe Burrow torched them for over 500 yards in what could best summarize the Ravens' 2021 year, a three-score loss on the road with Josh Johnson starting at quarterback for them. But with last year in the rearview mirror now, it will be go time for them in 2022. Lamar Jackson has a lifetime 1-3 playoff record, fair or not, including a loss to the Bills in which they put up just three points, and within that game, Buffalo had a pick six when Baltimore was in their red zone. Lamar in a lot of ways looked off in 2021 and not like himself, and of course with that, you know, with a scrambling quarterback, it's never he had a bad stretch of games, it's oh my god the NFL figured him out and he's doomed forever, which is both annoying and usually not true. Lamar is a former league MVP and has weapons to work with. Unfortunately, those set of weapons have not been fully healthy and on the field all at the same time. And when there's an offense with Lamar, J.K. Dobbins, Marquise Brown, Rashad Bateman, and Mark Andrews all on the field at once, and maybe even throw Pat Ricard in there depending on the situation, if Lamar can't produce with all of those guys on the field and not just a combination, then yes, I would side with the crowd that he has been figured out, but we haven't seen that yet. 
both Baltimore and Cleveland were candidates for today's video because Cleveland is very much in the same position Baltimore is in at the moment. They won a playoff game in the 2020 season and failed to reach the postseason for one reason or another the following year. But back to Baltimore, and for a team that very much has Super Bowl aspirations for the upcoming season, they have a lot to prove in 2022. Can Lamar hang with Allen Mahomes all in the same year when everyone's healthy and everything is, for lack of a better words, you know, right? Getting to the Super Bowl for any AFC team is not going to be easy, and if Lamar and the Ravens, or Justin and the Chargers can, as earlier discussed, it will make a Super Bowl victory that much sweeter. And with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, now is the time I ask you to leave a like and subscribe to the channel because it would truly mean the world. And until next time, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.